Hello dear students, I'm Dr. Carver. Today we are going to cover the protocols and login. I'm going to do some orientation. I hope to see some students here to ask him, um, any questions and please email me. So at the beginning of the course, um, you have, you maybe you already receive it, but it, uh, uh, some of you did receive it, some of you not yet, the lab kit. It contained chemicals and equipment that could be harmful, that could injury and in some point can get you to do ER and uh, depend. You don't know if you are allergic to this chemical. So I really want you to use all the time goggle in your eyes and also a glove. So you are responsible to follow all the directions precisely. So if you are in the top hat, I did put a, um, a link. I want you to click on it and it will take you to the first free, seven days of free. And you are going to follow me uh, on this course with uh, corresponding to the lab. So it's your responsibility to keep all the content of the lab away from your kids, away from the pits and anyone not on rule in this course. I put an email, I want you to sign it, send it to me back that you agree. If you don't sign this agreement, I am not going to accept you in the course. This is a must to sign this agreement. Once you have received the lab kit, you are fully responsible for all the comments. You have to read over the safety and everything. You have to, uh, you are going to make your kitchen like it's your virtual lab. The fire extinguisher should be in the lab. The eye washes should be in the lab. Fire blanket in the lab. Safety showers in the lab. And then that you do have the fire extinguishers at home. You have the fire smoke detector. You have the first aid. Any broken glasses is the same thing. If you broke um, a big piece of glass, you cannot put it in the trash can because if the trash people get injured, they can sue you. You have to call the city and the city will tell you the proper disposal for this big piece of window glass. You cannot trash it in normal glass, uh, trash. So the same thing in the lab. Any broken glasses go to a special uh, uh, trash for that. The biohazard beam, supposedly, for example, you have a pet that died. Are you going to put it in the trash normal? No, you are not. It's considered as a biohazard. You cannot, any biological things, you cannot put it like that. You are going to call the city and the city come and pick up this dead body of this pet that you have. I hope for, hopefully it's never happened, but it's happened to me that I lost a dog like that. So anyway, so yes, in, in the lab, any biological hazard, any biological, what is considered? Anything that is a human or uh, animals, uh, skin, organs, blood, even the gloves that touch it is considered as a biological hazard. And you go to a special trash that is always red. Okay, and then, um, in each lab, you have the first thing you are going to notice is the alternate exit roads for quick evacuations. And for ladies, if you are pregnant or for gentlemen and ladies, if you have any medical condition that may cause a fainting or allergic reactions, please inform your instructor immediately. But since we are not actually in the lab, um, this lab manuals, uh, this um, uh, has a pictures below of the safety equipment found in any typical laboratory. I want you to go over and see it. The glass disposal, the biohazard bean, the first aid, the fire blanket, the safety shower, the eye wash and the fire extent is a, the fire extinguisher. We don't, even in your kitchen, 
if you are doing the experiment and you are going to do some experiments with um uh, in in virtually with some of your uh, colleagues and you are going to take a picture you are going to take i will ask you to take a little video you are going to send me all this so i don't want to see coffee or wrong i don't want to see food in the same bench you are working this is very important imagine yourself that you are in the lab do not eat or drink or smoke in the lab of course you don't you don't run or jump or horse play during the lab never apply cosmetic or insert contact lenses in the lab you cannot even touch your your uh, with your hand you touch your face you don't do that you don't know what what you touch what if we are working with some bacteria disinfect your table area before and after you finish the lab speak uh, quietly because you are going to work on group i don't want you to speak with an an as a group, ha ha ha, I'm talking. No, we have to learn how to work quietly and in a group by respecting the others. Avoid wearing any expensive thing when you are doing a lab, any expensive uh, clothes, any expensive jewelry, scarf. And at, at some point, and especially when you do microbiology, um, uh, and you are working with the benzen fire. I don't want your hair down. You have to attach your hair, tie your hair back uh, because it's minimized its exposure to open plants. Uh, that's imperative. In any lab, in all over the world, you cannot wear an open shoes, flip flop, sandals, unless they are closed toyed shoes. And some labs, they don't even allow to wear shorts. All right, some lads. Report any accidental cats. Mistakes happen, accidents happen. I will tell you a story that it's happened and it's a true story. When I was an associate professor at UG Southwest and I was doing a research, when I just came in, it was back in 2000. I read in the news and they know about it and they even know the lab when that happened. A postdoctoral position done a big mistake. He spelled some radioactivity. He cleaned it. He did. He was working late. He cleaned it, thinking that he cleaned it. He went home. He contaminated himself. I contaminate. He's a pregnant wife that died, and the baby died. This is a true story. So be careful. Accidents happen. You know what is going to be, and um. Uh, legal action if you don't talk about it everybody can do mistake everybody can do accident but you have to let know you have to report that's not mean you are working bad no when you are working this is when we do incident we try to avoid them by taking all the precautions but it's happened the best thing to do is to report it all broken glasses i told you should be discarded in the broken glass box it am contaminated with the blood, uh, bodily fluids such as salva, blood, uh, uh, should be discarded in, uh, uh, actually, if it's big, should be discarded in the biohazard bin. But if they are like, uh, like slide, for example, you have to put a slide, slide is a little slide piece of glass that we use for our microscopy to see, so for example, our, uh, epidermal uh, buccal uh, uh, tissue. So um, once we finish, we put it in in uh, in a baker with 10% bleach and water. Do not flush materials down the sink or place because you are going to contaminate the environment. Um, or trash uh, or place it in the. Uh, In the trash can, unless your professor or instructor has instructed you to do so. You have to wear um, a lab coat or aprons, gloves, goggles all the time. I really want you to see when I, I want you to take a pictures of all your safety area and whoever sent me those pictures with the goggle, the gloves available, the lab kits, 
available and in your bench in your kitchen will get extra credit from me by sending me just a picture. I don't want anything. I just want to see a clean area and your name, your ID with those uh, materials in the table, uh, kitchen table, all right? There will be non-authorized experiments. All right, that's for the lab safety. And that's what I want you to do for at the beginning of each lab, each course. And I hope that I am taping this. Now, I want to show you in here what are the chemicals that we are using a lot. We're using different chemicals. And each chemical, if you look at it, we have what we call the uh, like a diamond shape. This is um, National Fire Protection Association, NFPA label. Um, it's not a color picture, but I put down in a little um, rectangle the color. This is red, red for fire hazard, right? This means work with this product this list of product that they show you earlier work it if you have like and you go from number zero to four zero mean is not hazardous and four is very hazardous so for example if you have zero it's okay we can leave it at some um, uh, uh, at room temperature in contact with the sun it will not expose but if you have a number of the three or two or even one well we have to work if you have one we have to work very very careful when we expose it to the sun or around the fire we can it can expose this is why uh some of those material we put them really on the dark all right we have also blue blue for health all right also you have a number from zero to four so we we cannot um, if you have like number one, well, we have to be very careful to not let it touch our skin, to not let it touch our eyes, to not drink it either. All right. Yellow is for reactivity. Uh, that uh, that are not stable to any um, uh, any external uh, change, any factors like temperatures. Like, uh, what I do? Shall I put it in the water? Maybe if I put it in the water, it can expose. You know that the sodium, if I put it in the water, can expose? Sodium in contact of water, expose. Okay? Um, and I also go from zero to four. And also the white color, the white color, this is for specific hazard, uh, like um, radioactivity, uh, we oxidizers, some alkaline solution, some acid solution, we should not put them in contact with a water. All right. What is material safety data sheet? Every lab, and actually it's so funny. I, I have a friend that is an engineer and he's the one that is, um, uh, he's the chef engineering and uh, his office is in the top of uh, some big building in, in Dallas. And these buildings have uh, people that work there, uh, offices for doctors, some little shop um, uh, to shop, uh, ca even coffee. It's a very fancy building. And you have the people that live there too, in Dallas. And when you went to his office, the first thing that they noticed, MSDS. And they was like, wow, why? I was thinking, to be honest, I was thinking MSDS is only in labs. No. And I asked him why you have the material safety data sheet. 
And he said, because we do have IC machines, we do have uh, uh, other uh, um, machines that we need to know information about the hazard and the safety precautions of those machines. We use also chemical to clean. We need to know precaution about those medical, even what we call bleach that we use or disinfectant agent, any detergent. It's cited there, it's cited there in this material safety data sheet. So material safety data sheet, MSDS, each chemical has an MSDS. Each solution has an MSDS. Each machine has an MSDS. It contains information about the hazard and the safety precaution. If you want to know about any particular chemical, well, you have to go and look at your MSDS. It's always localized in one of the shell of the lab. So I think I cover everything for our safety data sheet. I did put a syllabus. And they put an, an, an email agreement. I am, I repeat it. If I don't receive this email agreement that they post in your blackboard, I will not accept you in my course. You have to sign it, please. You have actually just to print it up, print your names on it, email it back to me to, to the email I, I provide. Well, um, thank you so much. That's, um, for the lab today, um, unfortunately, I was hoping to see some students because I told you that they will be available from 10 to 11 a.m. I will leave this open just in case some of the students join, but I am stopping the registration, uh, the typing of the decisions right now. You don't panic if you are working right now, but I do want you to always, we will try to have one lap per week, right? And then we go over the lecture, the first lectures uh, later on. I do have a channels on the YouTube where I cover, but in, in very easy way, the uh, H biology uh, non-major and major uh, courses. So I really want you to subscribe and um, follow me. The only reason you subscribe you are going to help me to not always copy the link, send it to you because you are going to be overwhelmed with so many um, uh, tools that I am giving you, but you are free to follow me in YouTube and uh, subscribe and you can always uh, see those um, lectures that correspond actually to the, your course, the 14. Oh, eight. I wish you best of luck. I'm going to stop the taping, but I will be here until 11. Thank you.